Tis the season for giving, self-reflection, holiday celebrations, and that inevitable awkward attempt to explain to people what you do. Maybe that part is not true for everyone, but it's all too common for content marketers. And today I am going to tell you what my go-to answer has been for years and why I'm trying really hard to break away from it. You're listening to the Content Head Podcast with me, Joe Michalowski. Every week I dive into one big idea that's come up in my day-to-day while leading content in B2B SaaS. Listen in for lessons and rants about working through the challenges of being a lean content team in the do more with less environment we all find ourselves in. Thanks for joining me to nerd out about content. Let's get into it. My family has had a running joke for my entire life that we have no idea what my dad does for work. I don't ever remember actually having one of those like cliche TV career days when parents came to talk, but my entire family needed it. Mom included adults. It was not just kids that did not know what my dad did. And I didn't necessarily follow my dad's footsteps as far as my actual job goes. I'm in content marketing. For the record, I do know what my dad does. He owns a business that sells supply chain machinery, things like extruders and screen changers to plastics manufacturers like 3M and DuPont. So you're welcome, Dad. I have paid attention. But pretty much immediately after college, I got hit with the same running joke. Everyone kept telling me, we have no idea what Joe does for work. And so me and Dad have that in common, at least. So to be fair, the majority, the vast majority of my immediate and extended family have had or currently have very we'll call them traditional jobs, jobs that people don't really question what they do. Teacher. A lot of teachers in the family, like the good chunk of the people that I spend most of my time with in my family are teachers. Secretary, uh, years ago, my grandmother was a secretary in a public school system. Accountant, police officer, corrections officer, specialized marketing jobs in a B2B SaaS business. It's not exactly the wheelhouse for anyone in my family, which, you know, fair. That's okay. So instead of giving everyone a crash course in B2B SaaS marketing every time they asked, I fell into the habit of telling people what I do for market is marketing for software companies. I say, I'm the words guy. And maybe if we really dig deep, I say something like, you know, when you search for something on Google and all those links pop up, I write articles that pop up in those lists. And maybe I'd get a laugh or like a follow-up question here or there. And for the most part, people would walk away satisfied with the answer. And I'd get through the awkward conversation and we move on to something else. The only problem is that I kind of, I started to identify with that explanation, even when talking to people in my space. So what do you do, Joe, for Mosaic? Oh, I'm the words guy. If you've seen blog posts, landing pages, case studies, eBooks, Anything on the website, I probably wrote it or helped write it because I've been around since the beginning of the company, really, or at least the beginning of the website, not the beginning of the company. And so I I was proud of that work. I was proud that I was the one kind of behind the scenes doing all of that work, and I felt like I was pretty good at it. And for years, I really just thought I was the words guy. I said that in other jobs too, but I think it kept me from tapping into the more strategic side of content marketing, even though that's where I knew I wanted to be. And even now that, you know, I don't just sit down and write all the blog posts, I'm just cranking things out. I catch myself defaulting to that explanation to the words guy mentality, even though I own the entire content strategy for Mosaic. And so all of this is to say is that during your holiday season and during all of these awkward questions about what you do, I want you to be more intentional about how you describe your job. And I have a few ways that you can do that. And so first, this is something that I have had to do a lot. It's really just reflecting on the value that you bring in your current role. There is nothing wrong with being the words guy or the words gal and being proud of the work that you're producing. But even if like what you want to be doing, what you like about your job and what you really do day to day is you know, cranking out words, your value isn't just the process of cranking out words for the sake of doing it. What is the impact of those words on the business? Are you driving pipeline? Are you helping sell 
product that otherwise wouldn't get out the door uh, without the words that you're writing. What feedback have you gotten about how valuable your work is? Have people in, you know, executive seats in the company come to you and tell you, oh, I was on a sales call and they keep mentioning our content. They keep mentioning the blog posts, like the things that you are writing words for aren't just, you know, there to exist. It's not just art for the sake of art. It has an impact on the business. What are some things that you do that aren't just writing words? So even if you do think that you are, you know, just the words guy or the words girl, that can't or probably isn't all you're doing all day. Are you project managing? Are you working like cross-functionally? Are you interviewing people? And so for me, this started coming up a lot when I realized that I uh, I was hosting podcasts, I was planning and like running content for our webinar program. I was doing a lot more customer interviews. And suddenly, like when I sat down and looked at my job, it wasn't just producing words. Like early in my career, I was working at an agency and I was writing like multiple blog posts a day, short one. I mean, this was 20. 14 or 2015 it's very different days of the content marketing world so i was like trying to crank out blog posts that's really what i did i wrote words like that was that was all and so now running all this other stuff i was like well words guy isn't really that descriptive of what i'm doing every day so even though like you know it's work i'm proud of it wasn't even accurate <laughs> anymore so i had to really think about that again and so that's the first thing it's just reflecting on the value and what it is that you're currently doing. And so the second thing is like taking that a step forward. So where do you want to be focusing your work moving forward or in the near future? And this doesn't mean like, okay, if somebody asks you what you do, like just make it up and like aspire to this is not a, there, there's, you know, maybe I'll do another episode on this. There's value in fake it till you make it. I really believe that. And, you know, we'll talk about that later, but this is not a fake it till you make it conversation. I just mean, what do you want people to know you for? Maybe it's your ability to plan out a content strategy that hits higher level business goals, like pipeline, revenue, whatever else that you're kind of tied to. Maybe that's like where you want to be focusing. Maybe you do want to stay tactical. Maybe you really like the actual like creative work and the production process. And so you want people to know what it is you do to put content together and you know, Maybe you pass that off and somebody else handles, you know, the the higher level strategy, but it's you that's doing the creative work and making sure that what goes out the door is of high quality. And like, that's very valuable and valiant work. Maybe you're moving more toward the management side. And so when you explain what you do, you want people to see you as a leader. And so what are you working on today that's setting you up for where you want to go? whether you're in that role and you're just trying to grow in it or you're trying to get your official job to be more along those lines. And that's what you should be thinking about when you're, you know, trying to explain what it is you do, kind of like what that future state is. And so when you talk about your work, no one needs to know like the hour by hour rundown of your daily tasks. Sure. Maybe you really do spend the majority of your time sitting at the keyboard, cranking away to get those articles done. It's a really time-consuming job. So like nobody should fault you for that being the case. Uh, so even if like it's you know 10%, 15%, 20% of your job that you are kind of focusing on in your explanation, like nobody, nobody's like fact-checking you on the day-to-day task lists. So I'm like, oh, well, like she said that she worked in content strategy, but I know she only works on strategy 17.5%. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Focus on, you know, where you want to go and what you want to be known for. And so the last thing, maybe this won't come as a surprise because I have a podcast now that is uh, me just talking to you, (laughs) but this is where I struggle the most and it's thinking in terms of an elevator pitch. And so to be clear, this is not like you know, you're not pitching your business idea to an investor and you have 30 seconds to get it across. Like, it's not that serious. Like, we're just talking about like what you do for work. So you don't need to like stand in front of a mirror and like practice your elevator pitch. And it's like, what do you do for work? It's like, okay, boom, business time. <laughs> like, let's sit here and make sure we have this down pat. No, we don't need to do that. But if you're like me, 
taking like a minute to talk about what you do turns into like some five minute ramble a thon of everything you're responsible for at the company. That's something that I have struggled with because once you get on a roll, you're just like, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this. And especially if, you know, you're uh, not feeling great about your current role and you're just like, maybe you're in the mood for complaining a little bit. You just kind of like start venting. It's just a vent session. So you don't want to do that, but you should think in terms of like, okay, like what's a nice, neat way to think about this? And you should use those first two points, you know, reflecting what you do now and also where you want to move to. And those two things combined should give you like a more focused view of how you think about your work. And so you don't have to just devolve into like this oversimplified, I'm the words guy, or I do the words for the company. Um, That doesn't have to be how you describe yourself. So that's what I've got. I've got those three things. And so, you know, kind of reflecting back on the content of this episode, I've got my, my little key nuggets that I'll give every episode. And first, I want to make it clear, like, say whatever you have to say to justify, like, the outsiders. Like, you don't have to have the perfect answer to what you do for your family. If you want to just say I'm the words guy and, like, I do all the words for a company so that you can, like, move on to more fun conversations at your holiday parties, you go right ahead. That is a perfectly valid reason not to get deep into the weeds of your work. Maybe you just don't feel like focusing on your work. You just say that, you appease people, and you move on. What I want you to focus on is not letting that oversimplification of your job become how you really think about what you do. That is something that I have struggled with uh, over the past few years, and I kind of just realized it. So I want you to kind of separate those two things. Like, If you have a simple version, great, but don't think that is the only version. Uh, Second nugget, Explain your jobs in terms of the perception that you aspire to, not just like the 100% accurate description of your day-to-day tasks. Again, this is not a test. It is you answering a very subjective question, and you should explain it in a way that puts you in the light that you want people to see you in and the work that you want to be doing. And third, again, elevator pitch. Again, I, as always, I'm a, I'm a rambly guy. Uh, but think short, sweet, and to the point, but with substance. So not short, sweet, and to the point with an evasion of the question, as we, you know, I would do with what the words guy, but really having substance to that conversation. And so that's that's all I've got for this episode. As we came into the holiday season, I, I really wanted to cover this, and I hope it helps. Best of luck getting through the questions during the holidays. And a special note, mom, if you are listening, I know that you are still going to say you don't know what I do, even if you listen to this episode and every episode before it. But that is okay. I will explain it to you anyway. Happy holidays, y'all. Talk soon. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Content Head Podcast. One thing before you go, I'd love to hear your thoughts about today's topic. Send a note to contentheadshow at gmail.com and let me know what's on your mind. And if you liked the episode, be sure to follow Content Head wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'll see you on the next one.